Hello and welcome to part two. Well, it's sort of part two. It's more of a continuation. On the last episode, I covered the abduction and murder of Sarah Payne. We covered the investigation and the trial and the convicted pedophile, Roy Whiting. And on today's episode, we're just going to talk a little bit about Roy Whiting. Today, I am drinking kombucha. No sugar naturally, whatever that means. And yes, I am still knitting. Roy William Whiting. Here he is. <laughs> oh God. Just be glad you don't have a face like that. <laughs> oh. Roy William Whiting was born in Horsham. Horsham? Horsham. Horsham. On the 26th of January in 1959. He grew up in Crawley where he spent most of his life and he was one of three children. And unusual for a mother, whenever Roy was 17, his mother left the family. She walked out. As a young adult, Roy found school challenging. He, found, he, found, he struggled. He found it difficult. He, <laughs> he rode the struggle bus. So he left school early and took up a string of manual labour jobs. Although he did eventually get trained up at the community college to become a mechanic. And he was successful. He got a job as a mechanic in Crawley. I mean, the world, probably for now anyway, is always going to need a mechanic. I mean, it is a job in demand for sure. So now this is his world. He, lo he tinkers around with cars and he falls into... Banger racing. <laughs> yes, whatever this is. I mean, his interests, they do go hand in hand. You know, I'm sure he had access to a lot of bangers. And apparently, according to the internet, in the 80s, banger racing was quite popular. It had a huge following. And Roy, he immersed himself in this world. And he was actually kind of good. At one point, he came third in a champion, champion, championship. But despite being watched by hundreds of people, Roy always kept his head down and maintained a low profile. He was not very rememberable on the scene. And I find that so weird. Like, if you come third, you know, the people, the people don't remember you, you blend in. I mean, dude, if you want sponsorships, you need to captivate the audience. You gotta get out there and shout. You need eyes on you if you want to make it a career. But this demeanor, it spilled over into real life too. Roy Whiting was an introverted loner with very few friends. He was just known as that local mechanic who would do like jobs on the side for a knockdown price. So I suppose he wasn't disliked. Like I have, a f I know a few mechanics like that. And the best word to describe Roy, which I covered in the last episode, a word that pops up all the time was scruffy. He is a scruffy MF. He was an average Joe, except for his scruffy scruffiness. But those who actually did know Roy never seen any disturbing signs nothing worried friends or family and he like never said anything that would freak people out like hey hey psst, psst, i think roy is a bit of a pedo it's weird right in 1984 roy met his future wife a petrol pump attendant it's weird how so much of these cases like revolve <laughs> around petrol and cars so apparently they hit it off because they married two years later. But apparently they didn't hit it off because then they were separated one year later. Even though she was pregnant. They got separated. She had a baby. They got divorced in 1990. Around 1990, Roy fathered another child, a daughter, to some other woman that we don't know her name. But apparently he has so a son and a daughter out there somewhere. 
God love them. I'd hate to, for Roy Whiting to be my father. Well, it's not like they took his surname. It was around the early 90s that Roy started developing paedophile tendencies. And he never told anyone he had these feelings. And if you do start to feel these feelings and you see yourself, oh, you want to act on them or you're like wanking off to kitty porn or whatever, you need to tell someone and go to therapy before it escalates, before you commit a crime. This is what Roy did not do, he should have done. Eventually, this obsession with pedophilia, it snowballed and Roy attacked his first victim. On the 4th of March, 1995, only a few years after his own children were born, Roy bundled up a nine-year-old girl shoving her into the back of his Ford Sierra. He then sexually assaulted her at knife point. Thankfully, the child was not killed, but released. The abduction and assault was all over the news. Police were begging people to please come forward with any news, anything that could help them. A few weeks later, a man who knew Roy came forward. After he seen on the news, he found out that the abductor of this child was driving a red Ford Sierra. This was the exact car that Roy had just sold off. Thanks to this man's tip, the vehicle was traced to its new owner and the knife was found still hidden inside the car. I mean, he's a mechanic. He would know exactly where to hide it. And you, like, you wouldn't think to look there. How creepy is that? That you could buy a secondhand car and it could have something like that hidden in it? You could be driving around evidence. On the 23rd of June, 1995, Roy admitted to the charges of abduction and indecent assault on a child. He was sentenced to, get this, how long do you think he got for abducting and raping a child? He got four years, four years in prison. Hang on, we're not finished yet, but that's not enough, correct? That is not enough, four years. Also, please note that the maximum sentence is life. He could have got life. So how did he get a measly four years? He received this much, much lesser sentence because he admitted to the crime right away. And, and what does that have to do with the length of the sentence? That does not make the crime he committed less severe. Like what? Are you assuming because he admitted right away he must, he must feel guilt? No, 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 there's more to come. There's more to come. Oh God, I don't like this man. I do not like him. Anyway, he was given four years. But get this, because of good behavior, yes, yes, he got two years and five months. I'm still not finished right? Those five months, those random five months, he had to do those because he refused to partake in a sex offender rehabilitation program. He refused. He refused to do it. That is what he was convicted of. And then he was released even though he refused to learn about curbing those feelings or he refused to acknowledge the hurt or learn something and he was still let go five months it is an insult to that child and her family that he only served two years and five months and he got out he shouldn't have been allowed out for refusing to participate in that program that should have been like nope not not allowed no release oh i'm triggered so Roy was released in November 1997, even though the psychiatrist who assessed Roy said that Roy was likely to reoffend once he is released. Don't release him then. Uh, duh, duh. So he was released and Roy was one of the first people to be put on the sex offender list. Register. He was branded a dangerous pedophile 
by his probation officers. They put Roy Whiting under close watch between November 97 to March 98. Okay, fast math. How many months is that? Seeing him once a week. Okay, November to March. How many months is that? Fast math. Fast math. Yeah. Five months. How is that close watch? How is checking in on a pedophile once a week for five months close watch? They seen him like 20 times. How is that watching somebody closely? So after March, after the five months of close watch, scruffy Roy Whiting faded into the background again. This, uh, this was until July 2000. Now, Roy had plenty of time to change his M.O. He got caught last time. He couldn't have that happen again. So he bought a white van and converted it into a moving prison. He filled the van with things he thought he could possibly need. And this time he decided there would be no loose ends. And he would have to kill the child he abducted. On the 1st of July, Roy Whiting carried out the abduction, sexual assault and murder of 8-year-old Sarah Payne. He would eventually be caught and sentenced to 40 years in prison. This is the story I covered in episode 1. Now, do you remember that I sort of touched on anti pedo vigilantes in the last episode? We're going to go into a little bit more now. Now, the Sarah Payne murder was huge. It was widespread across the nation. And the whole nation in unison was in revulsion. The crime was horrific. It was disgusting. And the media ran with this. They ran off people's anger and disgust. The newspapers, they said that pedo and sex offenders, their information should be accessible by the community. <clears throat> so a newspaper, I think it was News of the World, printed 20 names and photographs of registered sex offenders. This was a disaster. Anti-pedophile mobs started demonstrating in the streets. And like most mobs, it slowly grew violent. And the mob started attacking people that they thought were guilty. One innocent family with two young children went into hiding after being driven from their home by a 150 strong mob. Vigilantes smashed their windows with bricks and overturned their car. So they couldn't even like escape properly. They couldn't drive away. They're... What? That's crazy. And this is another reason why you need to be careful with publishing other people's information. One family, another family, was attacked <laughs> because the mob confused pedophile with podiatrist. I mean, like, it's just, oh, it's just chaotic. Like, you can't assume that everybody who gets their hands on information like that, you know, can read for a start um, or will be civil or act in accordance with that information. You can't assume that. So this was all around the time that uh, the media and the pains were pushing for Sarah's Law because of the mobs and obvious legal, legal hurdles. It was very hit and miss on whether Sarah's Law was going to happen, but eventually it was brought into law. Anyway, back to Roy Whiting. Roy is currently at HMP Wakefield Prison 
And you'll be glad to know that Rory Whiting has not had the best time here. Pedophiles usually don't. Now, I don't condone violence. I don't support it, nor encourage it. But when it comes to a guy like Roy Whiting, I really don't care that it happens. I like, I guess you should have a little empathy for people being stabbed and, you know, crap like that. But I just don't. I just don't. He's lucky to be alive. If this was in America, if he, if he was in America, he'd be dead. In 2002, Roy was attacked with a razor blade. He was attacked by another prisoner, obviously, while Roy was going to the kitchen to fetch hot water. And he was left with a six inch scar on his right cheek. In 2011, Roy was attacked again and stabbed in the eye. <laughs> Ooh, gross. It's like something from a horror movie. Roy's injuries were not life threatening and he was taken back to prison. I nearly said home. He was taken back to prison. I'm not sure what happened to Zai. I don't know. Maybe he's blind in one eye now. I'm not too sure. In 2018, Roy was stabbed yet again by two prisoners this time in his cell. Like they came for him. He was, t again, he was taken away to hospital but was returned because he was fine. So because of his good behaviour in prison, Roy has been allowed to, <laughs> to receive um, crafts, like arts and crafts. And he has been nicknamed the Matchstick Man. I think I've got that right. Because he has been building with matchsticks, like replicas. So he's built a replica of Big Ben. St. Paul's Cathedral and a Lancaster bomber, like a plane. Apparently he rarely leaves his cell because he's so scared of getting stabbed. So, so you'll be glad to know that in prison, Roy is still a loner. Um, he still has no friends and he spends his days either watching telly or gluing matchsticks together or getting stabbed. So with them odds, it is most likely that Roy will die in prison. It's a pity he wasn't there until he was 92. I mean, he could get out for a few years. But, um, but yeah, God willing, he will die there. References are in the description. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Salam. Also, I am still taking a break from Instagram. I am not, if you have messaged me, I'm not ignoring you. I am huffing with Instagram because they have put a shadow ban on me. Okay? Okay. <laughs>